Welcome to the final devotion for this week, taken from James chapter 4, and today we're looking at verse 17. If anyone knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. We're talking here about the sin of omission. Sin is often defined and understood by us as being not, uh, doing what we know we ought not to do. Committing those sins, uh, often defined for us by the Ten Commandments, that we do when we know we shouldn't do them. Those are sins of commission. But the Bible is equally clear that there are sins of omission when we don't do what we ought to do. Now, I think it's helpful for us to understand what James is saying here in the context in which he says it. It seems like a verse of its own, but it does come in the context of James talking about people and particularly businessmen who plan their lives without reference to God. And particularly the businessmen are planning lives of uh, moving of making money, of growing their businesses, and becoming rich. And there's a hidden implication there of greed, of just wanting to get richer, just wanting to do better, to, to have more, and to be more. And in some ways, it's not wrong to be ambitious, it's not wrong to want to uh, achieve and succeed more. But I think we often need to look at the motive by which we do it. And if the motive is greed, uh, instead of generosity, then we have a problem. And the sin of omission is the one uh, that is looking us in the face when we do that. And so I want you to think about um, all those things that you kind of know you ought to be doing, but find yourself not doing. And in today's day and age, when we are so busy uh, running our lives, uh, growing our family, feeding our family, uh, doing all the things that we need to do, uh, to become more successful. Often we can commit sins of omission because we don't do what we ought to be doing. And uh, I need to challenge us all because Jesus uh, was a wonderful example of somebody who never sinned, which means he always did what was right. He never committed sins that he knew were wrong, and he always did the good things that he ought to do. In fact, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 says that Jesus always went around doing good, which means he practiced generosity, which means when he saw someone in need, he went and helped them, which means that when he saw somebody um, needing something, whatever it might be, he went to that person and he helped. And I think that that's an enormous challenge for us. Uh, living a life of godliness is not about just not doing the things we know we ought not to do. But it's about doing all the good that we know we ought to do. Doing all the good that we could do. And making sure that we don't leave people behind because we've got caught up in our own selfish and greedy lives. Jesus taught often about this. And I just want to draw your attention, particularly to Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the sheep and the goats. When the end comes, when Jesus returns as judge, he will separate people as, he, as sheep are separated from goats. And then he will welcome those who are sheep into his heavenly home, and he will uh, send those who are goats away to uh, the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And this, the, the way in which he determines the difference is by what we did for those who were in need. It's not sins of commission. He's not separating us because we didn't commit adultery or we didn't steal or we didn't murder or we didn't lie or we didn't cheat. He separates us because we did help those who were needy. We did help those who were hungry. We did provide for those who were thirsty. We did give clothes to those who were naked. Uh, we did look around us and see everybody uh, around about us and we helped where we could we didn't commit sins of omission we were generous we were open-hearted and we saw the needs that were around us and we acted in order to help i want you to think about that i need to think about that for myself uh, if we uh, are seeking to live lives that are pleasing to god then we are seeking to live lives 
where there is no darkness in us at all. And that means that we're avoiding everything sinful. And it means that we do everything that we know to be good. God bless you as you think through the implications of that for your life.